I'm Cassie and I have the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Michael Wald, who's been nicknamed the Blood Detective, for his keen ability to zero in on health problems and find natural solutions. Dr. Wald, you also hold several degrees and certifications, including board certifications yes. in nutrition. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some questions that people have sent us through via our email on today's topic of sleep. It's always a good one. Yep. So Robin has sent us an email where she describes difficulty sleeping. She would like to know the best herbs or vitamins to take to help with her sleep problem. She's asking particularly about melatonin and tryptophan. Okay, well, I have to admit that I, I don't sleep that much. Uh, that's because uh, I'm thinking about all you people. <laughs> so this leads me to the first point. Before we go to melatonin and tryptophan, we need to first look at our uh, at our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that most of the time, sleep issues, or a lot of the time, are really from stress and anxiety, and just we just set ourselves up for a very stressful existence. Uh, and and unless we manage that, I don't think there's any amount of natural substance that is going to counter. And even if we could use a medication or a nutrient to help our sleep, it's always best, I think, to focus on the causes of the sleep Absolutely. problem. Any number of health problems uh, and, and disease conditions have as a side effect sleep issues. So the treatment uh, or remedy for that sleep problem would be to effectively manage that health problem. And there may be specific nutrients and sometimes medications that when all else fails, you would use for that sleep. Mm -hmm. Why not just sleep aids? Well, the, the medical sleep aids, many of them are addictive. And uh, once again, they get you into a pattern of dependence. Maybe not in the sense, in every case, of you'll become physiologically dependent on the drug. But, of course, if something helps you that's a medication that's not considered a dependent medication, but you want it and it works, you're going to continue to rely on it and ignore the processes. I would think there would also be more side effects. Yes, there are side effects, exactly, Cassie, of these medications and... Um, the quality of sleep is not the same as naturally induced sleep. So mm -hmm. most people watching this video already understand that we want to do these things as naturally as possible. And Robin, who has sent this question, obviously gets that because she's asking about two specific things. So mm -hmm. let, me, let me address those two things right there. Um, melatonin uh, is a hormone, and it has lots of effects, uh, potential effects on the body. And, and one of them is the improvement of sleep quality. Melatonin is made mostly at night and then peaks at different times during the sleep process, particularly during the REM3 or, or, or stage 3 REM sleep. So it's made naturally. Yes, naturally it's made naturally, naturally in our body. right, in, in an area of, of the nervous system in the brain, uh, and the um, pineal gland actually, that makes melatonin and that induces sleep. So if we're going to use melatonin, Robin, we'd want to take melatonin uh, about a half an hour to an hour before bed, somewhere between 3 milligrams and 6 or maybe even 9 milligrams. Some people respond to more or less. Mm -hmm. Now, strangely, in, in my experience, most people that I talk to about melatonin have tried it and it doesn't work. So that doesn't mean it's not going to work on someone else, mm -hmm. but I have not found it particularly effective. There are studies that have shown that it can be effective, and there are studies that show that it's not. Mm -hmm. So these are things that you want to try. Um, I can't think of any uh, reasons not to take melatonin, um, but it is a hormone, and if you're on other hormones, you should speak to someone with training to just make sure everything's working well together. And melatonin always, 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 Cassie, should be taken at night when it's physiologically the, the, supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. If you, uh, unless you're a day-night worker and you have like switch sleep patterns, then uh, you know you take it differently. But melatonin, if you take it, for example, uh, during the day, I, I was aware of patients that were told by um, clinical nutritionists actually to take melatonin in tiny doses in the morning and to increase towards nighttime, which makes some sense. Mm -hmm. It's just that that increases the risk of breast cancer. So we do not want to do that. No. So we only want to take it at night and in fact, melatonin has been studied to be very useful for breast cancer uh, in particular. So when used right, this may sound like a contradiction, but say mm -hmm. that again. Melatonin, when used physiologically, taken at night, can uh, help uh, breast cancer, helps uh, kill off cancer cells, and uh, improves sleep quality as well. And without okay. rest and sleep, you can't repair anything. Mm -hmm. The dose depends on when some you know, gets a dose that they respond to. So you might want to start out with... Uh, 
anywhere from a half a milligram to up to three milligrams or even even much more than that and uh, you'd want to stick with that dose I would say for one week at a time and then if that doesn't work perhaps go up uh, but I wouldn't go beyond nine milligrams because if it's a sleep a simple sleep issue it's not working then that's just the that's wrong remedy and then tryptophan so tryptophan is an amino acid which is um, again has many many health benefits but the way that it might help induce sleep is tryptophan is a precursor it forms serotonin and serotonin is a commentive for the nervous system and that helps induce circadian rhythms mm -hmm. conducive with better sleep so that could help the dose there might be anywhere from 200 to maybe six or eight hundred milligrams um, and other than these two things, Robin, uh, looking at your diet look, uh, to see if you have uh, added stimulants and uh, things like uh, caffeine or, or chocolate. Now, not only you know coffee has caffeine, sure. so it's hidden in a lot of different foods, and other stimulants than the sugar, and just a poor diet in general. But again, I want to stress that stress and anxiety, I think, you know, is, is the trigger for most sleep issues. And we'll end by saying that stress and anxiety increase cortisol levels, which is a stress hormone, which keeps our bodies in the alarm stage of stress. Mm -hmm. So we're awake, 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 because we think we're running away from uh, some threat. This is a throwback to our evolution, you know, cortisol and stress mm -hmm. keeps us going and alert. That flight or that's flight. A, yeah, the flight mm -hmm. or flight response, exactly. The stress response, that's, a not, that's not what we want for sleep. Mm -hmm. So these are just a few of the things, and again, on our website, there's lots more on sleep and, and sleep remedies there. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you.